Look at almost any map out there and you'll see that Greenland is absolutely massive and almost the same size as the entire continent of Africa. This isn't an accurate representation of Greenland though, so why is it even displayed this way? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the 8th class in the GNAV series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the most common type of chart projection out there which is called the Mercator. This is a very common type of chart projection and it's the one that Google Maps use for instance, it's everywhere. And while it does display the earth in a very easy to understand format, it does have a few drawbacks. In the 1500s, a Belgian cartographer named Gerardus Mercator developed a chart for use at sea. They were designed to allow ships to steer a constant track or a rum line rather than the shortest possible great circle track just because it was easier. The direct Mercator is the typical projection used for maps that you will see. Um, this is the one where the great circle of tangency is at the equator. It uses a cylindrical projection and there are a few other types of cylindrical projection where you can have oblique which is where it's at a random angle or a transverse where it's perfectly lined up with a meridian of longitude. In this class though, we're just gonna talk about the classic direct Mercator chart. So one of the big problems with the direct Mercator is the display of latitude. As we get further and further from the equator, the distance in between these lines starts to expand and expand, and the lines of latitude start to become more spread out. These lines are roughly every uh, 15 degrees or so, and you can see that between 30 and 45, 15, it's this distance, but then the next 15 degree increment between 45 and 60 is actually increased so large that I couldn't even fit it on the page. The lines of longitude are also displayed a bit distorted as well, because on the Earth, they converge to a single point, so they're slightly curved, but on a Mercator, they do not. They're just displayed as parallel lines at all latitudes and are spaced apart equally. This means that the lines of latitude and longitude will intersect at right angles, which is useful for displaying angles, but our scale expands as we move further away from the equator due to the latitude lines getting more spaced out and spaced out, and these longitude lines not converging at any point. This is why Greenland, which is very far north, appears to be the size of Africa on a Mercator, when in reality Africa is about 14 times the size of Greenland. Scale is the ratio of chart distance to real life distance. One to 50,000, for example, would mean one unit on the chart equals 50,000 units in real world. On a Mercator chart, the scale starts to expand as we get further from the equator, which almost has the effect of zooming in. Um, so a one to 50,000 at the equator might become a one to 25,000 at the high latitudes. Remember the smaller number actually means that we're getting more zoomed in because we're gonna get a little bit more information, a little bit more detail as this one unit instead of rep 50, representing 50,000, now is only representing 25,000. So you're gonna get a lot more of them on the page, if that makes sense. This means that the Mercator isn't actually very useful for navigation at high latitudes, roughly above 70 degrees north or south, and it is very useful in the um, equatorial regions, maybe between about 10 degrees north and 10 degrees south where the scale expansion is actually very slow and it speeds up rapidly as we get closer to the poles. We can figure out the exact change in our scale depending on the latitude that we're at by using the cosine equation. So if we think a scale as being 100% when we're at the equator, where cosine of zero degrees, the equator, equals one, then the denominator of the scale, which is the big number, will increase as we go up in latitude. But the value of cosine eventually reaches zero at an angle of 90 degrees. So we just have to use the inverse. Never mind that explanation, there's an easy formula to remember, which is the scale of the latitude that we want 
equals the scale at the equator multiplied by 1 over cosine latitude. And you might be saying, why don't you just do scale um, over cosine latitude? It's because then you get an answer which will be 1 over 50,000, for instance, which is the format that you use here. So you can just chuck scale over a scale of the equator divided by cosine latitude. And remember that it's only the small number, but it just keeps it in a nice, easy format if you do it this way. So let's look at a quick example of where we would use that equation. So a Mercator chart has a scale of 1 to 200,000 at south 60 degrees. What is the scale of the chart at the equator? So let's just plug in that equation and chuck in the numbers. So we've got scale at the lat equals scale at the equator times 1 over cosine of the latitude. We know we're at 60 degrees. The scale expands equally if it's north or south, so we can ignore the south. And we know that the scale at 60 degrees is 1 to 200,000. So we can go 1 to 200,000. 200,000 equals the scale at the equator, which we don't know. Just leave it as S multiplied by 1 over cosine 60. Okay. So then if we rearrange again, we can see that uh, 1 to 200,000 equals the scale at the equator multiplied by 1 over 0 0.5. I just know that cosine 60 is 0 0.5 or half. So 1 over 0 0.5 is 2. So we know that the scale multiplied by 2 equals 1 to 200,000. And then you would take the 2 down. So 1 over 2 times 200,000 equals the scale. And the scale at the equator would equal 1 to 400,000. And then you do the quick error check. So we know that the scale at the equator will be a larger number. And then as we go closer, the scale expands. So we have the effect of zooming in. And we're going to a higher latitude. We'd end up with a smaller number. We've done it the right way. Good. So what if you're not asked for the difference between one latitude and the equator and are instead asked to compare two latitudes? Well, we can make a simple edit to this formula, which is very useful to use. And the best way to think about it is ABBA. And you have the scale at A multiplied the cosine B equals the scale at B times the cosine of A. And then you would plug in the latitude for A here. Um, sorry, the, yeah, the latitude for latitude A is here. And you use the cosine of latitude over here. And the cosine of latitude for B is here. And the scale for B would be, the answer would be here. It kind of looks a bit strange because we've not got loads of one overs and stuff like that. But because we're doing a lot of cross multiplication and stuff, the ones disappear essentially and you can work it out in a nice easy to use equation like this. So let's look at an example of when we would use this ABBA formula. At north 45 on a Mercator chart, a 10 centimeter line represents 100 nautical miles. What is the approximate scale at south 30? Okay, so first things first, we actually have to find out what the scale is. So 10 centimeters equals 100 nautical miles. Okay, so 10 centimeters therefore equals 100 nautical miles uh, multiplied by the conversion into meters, so 1852, and that will equal 185200 for 10 centimeters. Okay, and that value is in meters, sorry. Let's get them both into centimeters now that we've got them both into metric units. So we've got 10 centimeters equals 185200, and then we'll chuck on a further two zeros to make it centimeters. And then we know that one centimeter, we can get rid of these two zeros 
and we have a scale of one centimeter equals one eight five two zero 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 centimeters one to one eight five two zero 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 cool so we've got our scale and now we just have to use that ABBA formula so scale of A times cosine B equals scale B times cosine A. So we know that the scale at A is 1 to 1852000. We could do that as a 1 over, or you can do it the other way where you just write in the denominator and then remember to convert it back into a scale afterwards. So we've got 1852000 times cosine B. So this is A, north 45, and this line B is going to be this, south 30. Again, south or north doesn't matter. So we go cosine of 30 equals the scale of B, that's what we're wanting, times the cosine of A, cosine 45. So we know that B, if we rearrange this, is going to be 1852000 times cosine 30 over cosine 45. Now we'll just plug that into a calculator. Have a look. We've got 1852000 oh, zero, 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 multiplied by cosine of 30. Get that mad number in there. Divide that by cosine 45, and you get 2268 2227.5. So the scale at B is going to be 1, because we've just taken the 1 out here. We're going to chuck it back in. 1 to 2268. 227. So we'll just do the little error check on that again. The higher latitude is north 45, so that will have the more zoomed in effect, which will be the lower number. And this number is lower than this number, and scale B is at a, a latitude closer to the equator, so it's going to have a higher number. It makes sense. So our ideal chart had to display latitude and longitude with lines intersecting at 90 degrees, which it does. It has to have a constant scale in all directions, which the Mercator doesn't have, but it does have very small expansion um, within those equatorial about 10 degrees north to 10 degrees south that we looked at. And the other thing it has to do is to display angles correctly and either rum or great circle lines straight. Something that we've not touched on is the convergency of a Mercator chart. So on a Mercator, there is no convergency, basically. The longitude lines never get closer to each other. So we can say that chart convergency is the same as Earth convergency at the equator. There is no chart convergency, like factor, to apply, in other words. So Mercator charts were invented so that a constant track could be followed by ships. So it makes sense that a constant track line will appear straight on them, which is why rum lines appear straight. The great circle line, by contrast, is curved, and the great circle line will always be closer to the pole, and the rum line will always be closer to the equator. Even in the strange case where the rum line crosses the, sorry, where the great circle crosses the equator, you'd get a funky S-shaped great circle line. So the difference between the rum line and the great circle track is the conversion angle, which if you remember is half of the convergency of the uh, lines. So on a Mercator, the chart convergency is just the change in longitude. There's no like chart convergency factor to apply. So in this example, we're going from 10 degrees west to 30 degrees west, that's a change of 20 degrees. So our conversion angle will be half of the convergency of these lines. So that's 10 degrees. It's half of that, so it's going to be 10 degrees difference. So if we start off with a rum line track of about 200 degrees, maybe, our 
great circle track would be 210 degrees. This is slightly different to the example we used in the class when we actually talked about convergency. That's because I was using a different type of projection which uses a cone shape which we're going to look at in the next class and that basically swaps these lines around where the great circle is straight and the rum line is curved. So in summary then, there are a few different types of cylindrical projection, We've got the transverse, the oblique and the direct mercator projection which we use and that has the great circle of tangency at the equator. The scale on a mercator chart expands basically due to non-converging longitude lines Instead of converging at one point, they're parallel the whole way up the chart. And also because our latitude lines expand as we get further and further away from the equator. This scale expansion means that as we move away from the equator, the chart quickly becomes less and less accurate. But within about 10 degrees north to 10 degrees south, it's an error of about less than 1%. So it's seen as good enough for use but then above 70 degrees north or south, it's completely unusable because of this scale expansion. To find out what the scale expansion is, we can use this simple formula where we have the scale at the latitude that we're looking for is the scale at the equator multiplied by one over cosine latitude. And that gives us a formula, which is uh, a format, sorry, which will be one over a large number. And that is our scale. If we're not going to the equator and we're looking for the differences between uh, two different latitudes. You could always go through this equation, go back to the equator, then back out. But there's a much easier formula, which is ABBA. Scale at A times cosine B equals scale at B times cosine A. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the scale. You could be looking at distances, for example. So the Mercator chart was invented to, to display rum lines as straight, which is what it does. And a great circle will be curved with the peak of the great circle curve being closer to the poles, even if it crosses over the equator. It would be an S-shaped great circle line. The difference between the rum line and the great circle is our conversion angle, which will be in there. And that is always half of the chart convergency, which is a bit confusing because there is no chart convergency per se. So it would be half of zero but it's not actually half of zero. We just don't apply the convergency to the chart and we use the um, just the change in longitude as our convergency. So what properties of our ideal chart does the Mercator have? Well, it displays latitude and longitude at 90 degrees. It displays accurate distances and angles. Yes, but only within 10 degrees north, 10 degrees south. Does it have a constant scale? No, but it is considered usable in the 10 south to 10 north region because it's less than 1%. So we can give that a wee tick with partly. Can it display high terrain? There's no reason why not. We can just use the classic way of displaying high terrain with the color gradient system. Does it display great circles or rum lines as straight? It displays, it doesn't do great circles, but it does do rum lines, so we can tick that. Does it display appropriate information? No reason why it can't have symbols for aerodromes and airspace and everything on it. So yeah, it does. So is it the ideal chart? Kind of. It's a good chart to use within 10 degrees north and 10 degrees south. But it does have its drawbacks as we move further and further from the equator.